Hey, this is Daniel for Radorama. I'm here at the world headquarters in New York City and we're gonna take a look at the Nikon D810. Okay, so I got one here in front of me. Let's open it up and see what you get. Okay, so we got the body here. It's about 20 ounces lighter than the D800 or 800E. They've also redesigned the handle here for bigger hands. It makes it a little more comfortable to hold, a little more balanced. You've got the power cables, power adapter that'll work anywhere in the world. This here is just the adapter for the, you wanna plug it right into the wall without the cable. You got your nifty strap that says 810 on it. So these little doodads here, you put them on the side of your camera to protect your cables. If you got your HDMI cables and stuff coming out so you're not ruining your ports. And we have the same ENEL 15 battery that you get with 800 800E, but with this camera, you get about 33% more battery life. Okay, so before we head outside, let's take a look at the, the, the body here. This is the replacement now to both the 800 and the 800E. So they've removed the anti-aliasing filter completely from this, so you're gonna get sharper images with that. There is a chance of more ray, of course, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, it's really almost a, a non-issue for most people. Uh, you've got a dual card slot here, SD and compact flash. They've moved around the buttons a little bit, so if you have an 800, 800E, just take a look before you start shooting. Um, on it, I have a 50 millimeter 1.8. This is part of a three lens kit that's gonna be available with the new 1.8 lenses, the 35, 50, and 85. It's a great way to get into primes pretty inexpensively, really nice sharp glass. Okay, they've also improved the autofocus on this thing. It's got a 51 point autofocus as before, but it's got the XP4 processor, which is gonna give you faster autofocus. It's from the D4S. You're also gonna have the group autofocus function, so if you're tracking birds and those kind of things, it'll be great for that. If you are an outdoor photographer, wildlife photographer, or landscape, they've got a first curtain electronic shutter, which basically eliminates all camera shakes. So if you want the absolute sharpest images on a tripod, you're gonna to wanna to use that mode. If you are shooting moving subjects, sports, uh, wildlife, etc., they've upped their game a little bit with the frames per second. You can go five now in FX mode. If you switch to DX mode, which is also gonna give you that multiplier on your lens, which is great. Um, you can go six frames per second. And if you use the MBD12 grip, which is by the way, the same one for the D800, you can go up to seven frames per second in DX mode. Because of the x 4 processor, you can shoot until you fill your card if you're shooting JPEGs as well. So you can really just motor away as long as you need to. Another great improvement is they've lowered the base ISO to 64. So if you need to drag the shutter, you know, longer exposures, you, you have that going for you without the need of ND per se. They've also raised the maximum ISO, which is gonna help you a lot in low light. So working with this camera, you can go into the low ISO mode, which actually goes down to 32, which is great. And then the high ISO on this is 51,200, which is just crazy high. So for people who wanna, wanna shoot raw, but let's say it can't handle the 36 megapixels, there's too much space processing power on the computer, they don't need to print large. Nikon has a new format, which is SNEF, which is about half the size and 12 bits. So you get much smaller files, uh, which is gonna be easier for you to handle in post. Okay, so we all know this is a great photo camera. It's also becoming a very robust video camera. The two main features that, that I like are they've added zebras for your exposure and also a flat profile, so you have much more flexibility in post. So the, in, in video, your ISO is a little bit different. You can only go down to 50, not 32, but it still goes up to 51,200 if you happen to be where there's no light. So this camera will also do slow motion at full HD in 60 frames. So like the 800-800E, you can get uncompressed video out of the HDMI port to an external recorder. That'll give you 422. You can also record internally to a card, which you could not do with the 800-800E. So you'll get a second copy, or if you want to give it immediately to a client, let's say on a CF card, you can do that as well. Nikon's also added an auto ISO feature. So if you're, you're running gunning, you can put, set your f-stop and, and your shutter speed, and the ISO will shift for you so you can keep a good exposure. They've added a power aperture, so you can make adjustments uh, while you're shooting video to the aperture. All right, so this is exciting. Let's go see what this camera can do in the field.
All right, so I had a lot of fun shooting the camera today. I want to thank Nikon for letting us take it out. I really love the new ergonomics of this. The 51.8 was really lightweight, really sharp. We got some great stills and footage, but we want to hear from you. Are you excited about this camera? Which features do you think are the most interesting? How are you going to use them in your work? Post below and let's get this conversation